Hi, Nally here. It is Sunday, February 24th, and I thought it was time to give you guys a little health update. Mostly because so many of you have messaged me inquiring about how I'm doing, um, what treatments am I undergoing, am I even doing any treatments, am I in remission even because I apparently look so healthy and good. I figured, you know what? It's only fair to keep you in the loop. I understand why many of you may have been confused because you have been following my health journey ever since 2013. So those questions were fair. Hence why I figured moving forward, I'm going to do these health updates monthly. Yes, to update you, but mostly to continue to document um, this journey because I know that healing is not linear. It goes up, it goes down, it goes in zigzags sometimes and I know that having this documented and seeing how far I've come will be priceless because that's what I have always always done not only has it served me it has served so many of you so here we go here is my february 2019 health update wait before this health update if you are watching this and you're from south florida and it is before march 3rd can you please click the link below because i am hosting a thriver meetup with stephanie siban and I'd love to have you there. I'm gonna give more information at the end of this video, but I'm just saying, if you're watching this video from South Florida, please click the link below if you'd love to meet in person. Back to the health update. You know what's crazy is I kinda of wanted to record this video really fast and make this short and sweet, but it's been so crazy, I don't even know how to summarize this. For those who are new to my story, know that I was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2013 and did the typical protocol of chemo, mastectomy, radiation, was cancer free for like three years and then got re-diagnosed again with the recurrence where they found out that I had a lung metastasis stage four metastatic breast cancer, right? 2017, had to repeat chemotherapy once again. I did six rounds with, thank you God, shrunk the lug nodules significantly, which allowed me to move on to hormonal therapy. So then I did Zolodex to put me under menopause so that I can then take the hormonal therapy, which I believe I started off with Letrozole. Letrozole, after a couple of months, showed signs of progression in um, scans, which I received probably a year ago. Therefore, switched me to Aromacin. Then Aromacin, also after three months, showed signs of progression in another scan. So, finally, switched me to Fazlodex. Oh my god, I forgot a part. Rewind. What I forgot to mention, which is very key, is right after finishing chemotherapy in May 2017, the second time, I tried Ibrance. Ibrance is the brand name for palbocyclib. Now, I've heard nothing but wonders because it's a new drug. Uh, Stephanie Seban, whom I'm co-authoring the Thriver's Guide with, has been on this drug. It was had just been newly approved by the FDA about like probably four years ago might be wrong there, do not quote me on that. After not even finishing a cycle of Ibrance, which is a pill that you take daily, my neutrophil count, my white blood cell count, crashed tremendously, where I was like at 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0.3. Um, normal range, I believe, is 1.8 to 7.5. So yeah, I was way below the normal range, which meant I was at risk of infection. It was too dangerous for me to continue. My uncle just told me to throw the pills away and we were going to continue doing hormonal therapy. That's when I started doing the letrozole, then the aromacin, and now the Fazlodex. Woo! Which brings me to my current treatments. I am on Zolodex and Fazlodex. That's it. Now, what happened was that a couple of months ago, my white blood cell count went up. I'm definitely giving my increase of neutrophils and white blood cells to one time to acupuncture and three nutrition and all the supplements and the herbs that I've been taking. When I received results that my neutrophil count was now at four, which is amazing in my case, my neutrophil counts have been like fluctuating between the ones, the twos, never reached over three and now I was at four after doing my first acupuncture session. Pretty confident that my body was stronger. After receiving my most recent scan results about now 
three months ago which showed again minimal progression now i don't want to confuse you or make you panic so when i say progression it means that the remaining lung nodules um there were no new ones that were found nor did it metastasize anywhere else it is just that the remaining ones were growing by millimeters so that was enough to make my oncologist worry a bit and start discussing um, starting any new treatments and then that's when i realized oh, maybe maybe just maybe i brands had made me neutropenic because i was just finishing a second round of not even round a second time of really heavy duty chemotherapy so maybe my bone marrow already took a beating and here i was starting a new treatment immediately and then now it's been like over a year that my body was able to heal and i was definitely a lot stronger i've done made a lot of lifestyle changes so i was like maybe we should give ibrands a second shot which i did my oncologist wasn't too fond about my decision because he knows nothing about eyebrows. Like I said, it's fairly new. Anyways, but I had been searching for a second opinion here and there and eyebrows just seemed to work wonders for so many women. So I wanted to give it a second try, which I did. And I kind of was hit with a big I told you so by my oncologist because it made me neutropenic again after not even completing two weeks of Ibrands and now usually Ibrands is 125 G's um, I took a hundred instead and still after two weeks of being on it I dropped to 0.3 and now the mystery I don't know why I am reacting like this and what's crazy is that neither do my oncologist or my Chinese herbalist and apparently my low white blood cell count is just this mystery to many other than thinking that my body has just been through a lot and my bone marrow is exhausted according to them they have not seen any cases where not only does my neutrophil count drop after not even completing a cycle of palbocyclib but it's taking a long time to go back up normally when you stop after a week your neutrophil count should go back to normal i was still at 0.3 then i went up to 0.2 Four, and now I'm at like 1.1 and I remain back at 1.1. That's my summary of where I'm at today, but it's mind-boggling to me because I feel fantastic. Not only do I feel fantastic, but it's Montreal winter here. My mom is sick. My brothers got sick. My best friend got sick. Everyone's catching cold. Knock on wood right now because I don't want to like <laughs> jinx myself. But um, yeah, I haven't been sick all winter. Not only have I not got sick, but I have a lot, a lot of energy. And maybe it's because of the wheatgrass slash celery juice I take every morning. I find it so weird to read results that say something's wrong with me when I feel so, so good. And that's how I feel about my SCAD results. That's how I feel about my blood test results. I don't get it. I really don't. So, so I guess to summarize all this for you, in a nutshell, my February 2019 health update is in terms of SCAN results, my last scan three months ago showed minimal progression no other signs of new spots or a metastasis thank you god and in terms of blood test results i am again neutropenic but if i got my white blood cells up once i know i can do it again and in terms of treatments i am only doing zolodex and fazlodex injections only those needles actually really hurt in the buttocks and the stomach so i wouldn't just say only yeah it's not fun but about the side effects you may be asking sides from some occasional hot flashes which have decreased tremendously ever since i started celery juicing every morning if you have no idea what i'm talking about you need to follow me on social media because i'm a lot more in Instant when it comes to posting there but yeah I've been celery juicing since December 1st and I have noticed a tremendous decrease in hot flashes throughout the day but like I said my energy levels are absolutely normal if not even more energetic than ever so it's just weird being told that something's wrong with you and you just feel good like I genuinely feel great that's my health update is that okay 
Did that update you guys at all? I really hope so because I've always tried to be honest and transparent with you guys so I don't want to lose that part. Okay, I feel like I am chasing daylight here. It's getting dark. So let me just hurry up. But the reason why I was asking if any of you are from South Florida is because I'm headed there this week. Yep, I am catching a flight on the 27th. We are attending two conferences. And by we, I am talking about me and this beautiful woman over here. This is Stephanie, whom I'm co-authoring the Thriver's Guide with. We're both headed to Florida this week for two conferences. The first one being Annie Appleseed's CAM conference. That is the Complementary and Alternative Medicine Conference for Cancer. It's all about holistic healing. She is one of our Chinese herbalist Dr. Wong's patients that he cured from cancer and she is teaching us all about alternative and complementary medicine. It's a three-day event with healers and just authors and thought leaders. I cannot wait to learn and hopefully, you know, gather as much information for us and for you and especially try to figure out this whole neutropenic thing. The second conference we are attending is the Miami Breast Cancer Conference where Stephanie is speaking. She's speaking on the patient and oncologist relationship and how an oncologist speaks to a patient is super important. So she is giving a huge and a very important talk then. In between all that, we are working on the Thriver's Guide. If you don't know, that's right. I'm co-authoring a book with Stephanie. I don't know how many times I'm gonna say it, but you guys gotta check it out here and subscribe to be a part of the process, please, because we're working really hard on getting it out by before the end of the year. That's like the goal. And I know it's needed more than ever, so we are dedicating a whole week in Florida to kind of just write. Now, the reason why I had also asked if any of you are from there, because of course, we are carving out some time to meet some South Floridians. Stephanie Seaban and I are hosting a Thrivers meetup in Boca at the Flamingo House. It's this beautiful co-working space in Boca and thanks to them, we now have this dedicated space to gather about 50 to 60 women. Yes, to gather and connect like we normally do, but also now we'll get to have like this panel and intimate discussions or a Q&A so you can ask us all your burning questions in person. Thanks to our sponsors, Fitz Foods Cafe and Rajus, there's gonna be some healthy snacks and beverages for you too. Thrive Gang is also present, so they're gonna have their little boutique showcasing your favorite Thriver pieces. Once again, this meetup is completely free thanks to our sponsors, so if you're from South Florida and you wanna come, I highly suggest you RSVP immediately if you're watching this before March 3rd because we had launched this on social media and in our Thriver's Guide newsletter, so uh, there's not that many spots left so if you're watching this on YouTube or on the blog right now I'm so sorry I'm late in announcing this but yeah it, it's like it's like next week so you you want RSVP like right now so that's my update do you guys still see me is it dark it gets really dark really fast here in Montreal another reason why I'm so excited to get some vitamin D in Florida if you have any questions feel free to ask in the comment section below like I said I want to continue to be really open and honest and transparent with you guys also in parenthesis you know it's kind of crazy and I feel like I should mention it here but after coming home from Florida after one weekend of a conference all about alternative medicine, complementary therapies, and holistic healing, and then another weekend at the Miami Breast Cancer Conference where there's all the leading top oncologists discussing about the latest treatments and stuff, I'm coming home to do another scan and then meeting my doctor to discuss um, what else to do with treatments. So. I just feel like I'm gonna be equipped, equipped with options, equipped with knowledge, and I just feel empowered and ready for anything and so, so blessed to have these opportunities. If anything, I feel like that's my most honest February update. As per usual, I will be documenting absolutely everything in Florida, so don't worry. Be kind to yourself and I'll see you soon.